They call this the River City. They also call it Whanganui, New Zealand's ninth city in size, a city with a population of 37,000. The river is perhaps the country's most beautiful and romantic, winding down from the snow-crested volcanoes in the centre of the North Island and emptying into the Tasman Sea. Whanganui itself lies at the junction of river and ocean. The main street is Victoria Avenue, reflecting the city's unostentatious prosperity. This is reflected in homes like these, in the sought-after residential section on St John's Hill. The population has increased 20% in the last decade, and everybody's happy about it, particularly those who make up the increase. There's a children's play area set aside in Cow High Park, and it didn't take the youngsters long to know it inside out. But no matter your age or where you go, you always seem to come back to the river. Maybe because it's so picturesque. Maybe it's because it's so peaceful. Or maybe you go instead to Virginia Lake, a well-known beauty spot in the St. John's Hill locality, to feed the world's cheekiest ducks and swans. You like wildlife? Then how about the deer, kept in special enclosures at Peat Park? We're back on the river again. There are three rowing clubs here, and the river's ideal for sculling because it's so wide. But as well as sport and beauty, there's history and culture. The Alexander Museum, for instance, houses one of the most outstanding collections of Maori artifacts in New Zealand. Wanganui remembers the past as it looks towards the future. The auditorium in the War Memorial Hall seats 2,000 people, for Wanganui is a city which thinks big. The river city is determined to progress before too much water has flowed under the bridge. <laughs>